Now let's talk about the chain rule for partial derivatives. The chain rule. Uh, the, general, the general form for chain rule that is if z equals f u v u equals g x y and uh, v equals h x y then we need to find the partial z partial x and partial z partial y the partial x partial z partial x should be partial f partial u times partial u partial x and plus partial f partial v times partial v partial x because u v are both depends are both depend on x so we have two terms and partial z partial y that is partial f partial u times partial u partial y plus partial f partial v times partial v partial y that's the general form for chain rule there are some uh, uh, special case we only prove the, the first the first special case the, uh, if z equals f x y and x equals g t y equals h t then there's only one in uh, there's only one independent uh, independent variable so this actually is a single variable derivative so there's dz dt dz dt that equals partial f partial x times dx dt plus partial f partial y times dy dt uh, this actually is the all actually all the cases are uh, can can be stated as a theorem we can we only prove for this case other cases are the proof the proofs of our uh, other cases are similar so we only prove for one case because delta z delta z actually uh, from the uh, from the total differential on the or the differentiability um, for the z uh, actually here we uh, all uh, the the all the functions here are differentiable all functions should be differentiable so the uh, all functions are differentiable here so delta z can be write as f x x y times delta x plus f y uh, x y times delta y plus epsilon 1 delta x plus epsilon 2 delta y delta, uh, epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 are both uh, tens, uh, tend to 0 as x y approach, uh, approach to 0 And then, um, as t approaches to zero, then delta x approaches to zero, and delta y approaches to zero. So we've got epsilon one approaches to zero, and 
epsilon 2 approaches to 0. Then we take uh, divide both sides by delta t and take the limit delta t tends to 0. Uh, delta t here, delta t. As delta z over delta t, that's the dz over, over dt. So that is fx limiter delta t tends to 0 as fx x y delta x over delta t plus f y x y delta y over delta t plus epsilon 1 delta x over delta t plus epsilon 2 delta y over delta t Because the first uh, the first uh, part can be the separate delta t tends to zero uh, because x of y does not depend on delta t as delta x over delta t plus f y delta x over delta t plus epsilon 1 delta x over delta t plus epsilon 2 delta y over delta t this two term does not de uh, this two term uh, don't don't depends on delta t so the first is fx x y that's dx dt plus fy x y dy dt. The epsilon 1 tends to 0 and epsilon 2 ten, tends to 0. So we just have, this, uh, have these two terms. That is fx x y times g, uh, g uh, the derivative of g plus f y x y and times h the derivative of h t that's the uh, tree rule for the special case that the independent variable has only one has only one independent variable Now let's uh, look for an uh, example. There's only one independent variable. Suppose y equals x times y, uh, z equals tem x times y, and x equals cosine t, y equals sine t. Then dz over dt that's the derivative of t that is partial z partial x times dx dt plus partial z partial y times dy dt the partial z partial x that is a y dx dt is negative sine t partial z partial y that is x and dy dt is cosine t. So that's actually the x cosine t minus y sine t. If you if you want, you can write as x as cosine t, that is cosine t square minus sine t square. That's actually that is cosine two t. There's only the, uh, there is only one independent variable and two intermediate variables. I look for the general case or example for general case. Z equals 
e of u sine v u equals x times y v equals x plus y for the general case at partial z partial x that is partial z partial u times partial u partial x plus partial z partial v times partial v partial x the partial z partial u let's take the derivative for u that is e u sine v the partial u partial x is y partial z partial v is that is e u cosine v and partial v partial x that is a one so that is y e of u sine v plus e u cosine v and partial z partial y that is partial z partial u times partial u partial y plus partial z partial v times partial v partial y the partial z partial u we uh, we got uh, a before e u sine v partial u partial y that is x as partial z partial v that is e u cosine v partial v partial y that is one so that is x e u sine v plus e of u cosine v that's a general case and uh, we can look for our third example if z equals u square log v and u equals x over y and v equals 3x minus 2y and then partial z partial x is partial z partial u times partial u partial x plus partial z partial v times partial v partial x the partial z partial u that is 2u log v the partial u partial x that is 1 over y and the partial z partial v that is u square over v and uh, partial v partial x that is 3 that is uh, 2u log v over y plus 3u square over v that's partial z partial x then partial z partial y that is partial z partial u times partial u partial y plus, plus partial z partial v times partial v partial y partial u partial z partial u and uh, partial u partial y that is negative x over y square uh, partial z partial u uh, partial v that's u square over v partial v partial y that is negative 2 that is negative 2 uh, x u log of v over y square minus 2 u square over v that's the general, ca general case and there is third case the third case that if there's w equals f x y z but y equals g x and z equals h x that means uh, the function has uh, 
three variables, but the three the first first variable is both intermediate variable and uh, the independent variable. So the there is only one independent variable because y z equal uh, y y z are depend and depend on x. So there is d w d x. There is both in the in, in the function f. There's both uh, x and uh, both the uh, the function has both an independent variable and an intermediate variable. So dw dx that is partial f partial x plus partial f partial y then dy over dx plus partial f partial z then dz dx. The first partial, partial derivative is only partial derivative, but the dw dx that is for the uh, this one. the first term we can view the first first term views x as intermediate variable uh, intermediate uh, intermediate variable. For example, uh, u equals uh, e over of ax and y minus z over a square plus 1 and y equals a sine x and z equals cosine x so here x should be both intermediate and uh, independent variable so du dx can be write as partial f partial x plus partial f partial y times dy over dx plus partial f partial z then times dz dx the partial f partial x so we just take the partial derivative in the f so is at a square plus one, one over a square plus one, that is times a e of a x and y minus z. Then take the partial derivative for y, that is e of a x over a square plus one, y minus z y minus z is just 1 times dy over dx dy over dx is a cosine x and plus e of a x over a square plus 1 that is take the partial derivative for z that is negative 1 and then times the derivative of z z the derivative of z that is negative sine x so actually as 1 over a square plus 1 as a e of a x as y minus z plus uh, 1 over a square plus 1 e a x times a cosine x and there's negative 1 negative 1 so plus 1 over a square plus 1 as e uh, a x as times sine x Mm. y minus z and if we uh, take the common, uh, common factor outside a square plus 1 uh, that e a x here is uh, 
there's a there's okay there's a y minus a z plus a cosine x plus sine x as e a x a square plus one uh, because a y equals a sine x and z equals cosine x so a z a cosine x and a negative a z that that's actually the same so these two these two terms cancelled that is uh, a y then and the left a y plus sine x sine x is uh, sine x is y over a so there's no uh, that that is actually that is a y plus sine x I can left add that that's a special case that uh, there's uh, both independent variable and uh, dependent variable uh, uh, independent variable and uh, intermediate variable in the in the function in the expression of the function and there's uh, the case four that's another case if w equals f x y z and z equals g x y there's one intermediate var uh, intermediate var uh, variable and uh, two independent two independent variable and the function uh, there's both inter uh, independent variables and uh, intermediate variables in the in, in the expression of function so there's partial w partial x should be partial f partial x plus partial f partial z times partial z partial x and partial w partial y that is partial f partial y plus partial f partial z times partial z partial y the x example like if there's u equals z E x square plus y square plus z square and uh, z equals x y square so partial u partial x that is partial f partial x plus partial f partial z times partial z partial x the partial f partial x that is 2x then times z e x square plus y square plus z square and partial f partial z that is e x square plus y square plus z square use the product rule and plus uh, 2z square e x square plus y square plus z square that's partial f partial z and times dz d, uh, partial z partial x that is a y square and uh, mm, we can just leave at that and partial u partial y that is partial f partial y plus partial f partial z uh, times partial partial z partial y that is uh, 2yz e x square plus y square plus z square and plus e of x plus y square plus z square plus 2z square e x square plus y square plus z square and then partial z partial y that is 2 x y that's the chain rule for 
multiple uh, multiple variables functions. And uh, there may be some other cases, but uh, if we know the uh, rules uh, or or the chain rules, and we can we can deal with this uh, some other cases. Actually, is uh, how many how many intermediate uh, variables uh, there's how many terms in the partial derivative. Uh, 